Hey everyone, this is D'Angelo, aka Darth Mexican here from The Geek Life, and today I'm with Rin the Yordle. Hello. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Pretty, pretty good, pretty good. So though, although I've quickly become a fan of your work, um, because everyone I've talked to seems to just absolutely love you and everything you do, <laughs> from Shy 205 to Jess, or Jesse B and all that kind of stuff. So uh, would you be able to introduce yourself for those who might not be familiar with Sure. Um, so, as you said, my name is Rin the Yordle. I'm mostly known for League of Legends work, as Yordle entails. Um, I've been part of the League of Legends community for cut, seven years now. Yeah. Uh, so, I started back in 2010, and now it has evolved to everything that you see here. Um, lots of fan art for League. I've been doing Overwatch now lately, too, because, obviously. Um, <laughs> MOBA games. Where can you go wrong? And then a um, little bit of anime as well, too. A yeah. lot of love for... I want to do some stuff of... Um, uh, Steins Gate. Yeah. So, you know, stuff That'd like that. That'd be really fun. Right? I want to do Steins Gate really bad. So, you know, things like that. And Soul Eater. Nice, nice. <laughs> so. so, one of the questions I always like to ask artists is um, because my parents are artists, so I love hearing their story. So, I want to know what actually got you into art when you were younger. Was it something that you were self taught, or did you have an influence around you? Or? I had a little bit of influence. Okay. So, there was two of them. Mm -hmm. One of them was um, when I was very young, my father used to. D um, dabble in drawing a little bit and what he did is he drew on the wall Mickey Mouse characters yeah. and I thought I could do that too so I took my crayons and went to try to draw on the wall and my parents couldn't scold me for that because they're like how do we tell her this <laughs> yeah. and the other thing was is I had a huge influence of Sonic the Hedgehog Oh, really? Yes. Well, I so mean... Sonic the Hedgehog and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were my thing. Yeah. And I was like, I need to draw these dudes so badly. <laughs> so, yep, those were my big ones. I was like, I need to just draw them. I just, I wanted to. And then all my friends really enjoyed it. Even yeah. as a kid, everyone's like, hey, that's really cool. So we'd all try to draw together, and I just kept with it. Nice. That's <laughs> awesome. And what about... Um... Your Twitch career, because I saw you that have like 12,000 followers on that, mm -hmm. and, and uh, you're now a Twitch partner. So how did you actually get into streaming? Did you, were you on Justin TV, or was it something more recent that you actually jumped into? I actually have been dabbling with streaming as long as um, one of the first ones I did was Livestream.com. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Yes, yeah, so I've been around even for Own TV, um, yeah. and then that one went out of business. And then Twitch came around. I made an account, but I wasn't sure what to do because mm -hmm. it was only for gaming. But I found out some people were doing art on the side, too, so mm. I did mostly gaming and then just showing my art a little bit there, yeah. trying to make sure I stayed in the TOS. And then they opened up the creative channel, which mm. opened up my partnership and everything else. So, yeah, I mean, it's been a thing for a while, but it evolved into all of this, and Twitch has been phenomenal with that Good. and the amount yeah. of support. Like, if any new creator is going out there and wants to stream, Picarto or Twitch TV is the best place to get started. Okay. Really, really awesome stuff right there. Awesome. <laughs> So um, you've done a lot of the uh, artwork for like Yordles and stuff like that mm -hmm. for, for League of Legends. What inspired you to actually do some of that kind of artwork? <laughs> I just like their charisma. I don't know what it is, but when I first started playing League of Legends, mm -hmm. Heimerdinger was the first, second character that I had played, and I fell in love with his kit and yeah. how funny he was. Like, his jokes, everything that he does, his walk and everything. I, well, I mean, I obviously <laughs> love him. Um, so I thought it was really awesome, and as I got to know the rest of the characters that were considered yordles, yeah. I found that I really enjoyed their kits because they were made to be quirky, yeah. crazy, interesting explosive characters and I just fell in love with them so it became a joke because I would only play a couple yordles and I was like ha I get it I'm Rin the Yordle yeah. and then it actually stuck like I only know how to play yordles and like two humans so I'm like oops okay well <laughs> I guess I'm stuck with it now <laughs> at least they're pretty diverse nowadays yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah that's pretty much it that's awesome um, so a lot of times uh, people who are creative I know for me it's like I get writer's block and all that kind of stuff but for you when you get like this sort of artistic block, uh, what do you do, or what's your method to actually like break through that? Is it simply like powering through, or do you have another method? There's a couple different ways. Sometimes mm -hmm. powering through does help. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just need to take a break. Mm -hmm. It really depends on how frustrated you are. If you're so frustrated to the point that you're literally in tears and you're just like, I can't do this, why am I doing this, why am I doing art or writing or whatever it is that yeah. your creative um, outlet is, stop. Go have a week, go walk out, go have a hike, anything like that, and give yourself a break to mm -hmm. not stress yourself out. Because if you're stressing out too much to the point that you're like wanting to quit, yeah. you need to just give yourself a little bit of a breather because it's good. Give yourself that time to give your uh, creative juices mm -hmm. a little bit of a break, right? Then sometimes when you're just like, all right, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to figure it out right now. That's a time to power through. Yeah. Because if you can, you just take little breaks, really quick little breaks, like five, ten minute breaks, um, and uh, reread or re um, look over your art or have somebody else look over and be like, okay, what am I doing wrong? What cre um, critique can you give for okay. me? Okay. Yeah. And that also helps you power through. So 
depending on how your emotional state is, yeah. give yourself a couple different options and try a couple different things until you figure out eventually you just got to get through it and it's going to take some time, but give yourself that time nonetheless. Mm -hmm. So that's really the biggest key there. Okay. And um, so this is one of the silly questions. Uh, <laughs> if you could choose any character from any fictional universe, you know, whether it's anime or novels or movies or anything like that, or even gaming, um, to come to this world and be your best friend for life, who would you want it to be? Oh, best friend for life. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, you got to put me on the spot for that <laughs> one. Um, actually, I would have to say probably Vivi. Oh, really? From Final okay. Fantasy IX or Zidane. Yeah. The, um, that's one of my, like, favorite games at heart. Um, I'm a black mage for life, yeah. like, when we're talking Final Fantasy stuff here. Um, and I absolutely adore Vivi. He's the yeah. sweetest little child, and he would actually make a really good friend, too, because he's, like, he's thoughtful, he's mm -hmm. insightful for how young he is, and he'd be, like, he'd be a good little kid, like, hey, what's up, buddy? I'm going to, like, let's go. Or Zidane. He'd just be, you know, the dude that you punch in the arm, and then you go have a good drink with, so. Both good options, yeah. Yep. <laughs> And what geek medium would you say has influenced you the most uh, growing up to, to really influence your artwork and all that kind of stuff? Even or just like your humor or, or anything you really do. Is, would it say it's like video games or... It's definitely video games. Okay. Video games have always been a massive part of my mm -hmm. life. Like anime has always been a little bit there. Yeah. But video games, like like I said, I've been playing Sonic since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. um, Team and Junior Ninja Turtles. Um, Lion King. Even the game. Like uh, this is all Sega stuff. Okay. I was a Sega person. Uh, Unfortunately, that's what my parents got me. And I wasn't allowed to have any other systems. I played that for ages until I got my first Game Boy and I got to play Pokemon. Yeah. So, you know, that was, like, my thing for a while. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's always been there. It's always been there for me. It's always given me influences, both funny and not. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been a lot of my character. Like, a lot of my very um, bright um, influences is because I'm into the cartoon-ish side. Yeah, and yeah. I just have fun with that. It's really bright, colorful, and eccentric. And it's awesome. It led to such a great art style and everything. Yes. Yeah. It's really <laughs> Which, cool. It's really fun, and I'm glad people like it so much. So Yeah. And um, what would you say uh, both your most favorite moment out of your art career, or even like Twitch career and all that kind of stuff, uh, would you say it was? Was it something more in the past, like when you were younger and, and just coming up, or was it something more recent when you're now either well established? Definitely more recent, and mm -hmm. that's where League of Legends really ties in. Mm -hmm. um, after I graduated college, here's where it gets a little sad, I'm sorry, but after I graduated college, I had to um, immediately leave, mm -hmm. and it wasn't by choice, it kind of ran away from home. Um, from there, I came back and I had nothing. Yeah. And at that time, I was not sure about my art, I didn't like anything that I was doing, and I was really depressed and just not doing so well. Mm -hmm. Some of my friends saw my sketches, though, from my when I was playing League mm -hmm. and they said hey you should post it to the forums you really should you're re like you're better than you think you are yeah. so I did reluctantly I was kind of like yeah whatever that ended up getting me the three summoner showcases now on all wow. chat everything else that League has done for me and in that process gave me a new life to start um, doing my streaming doing art full time rather than being at GameStop that I was for four years yeah. and I was able to build off of that um, Bachelor of Fine Arts that I have in animation and I'm still building off of that I'm starting to learn new venues and I couldn't be more thankful because if it weren't for the community and League, I know it's funny, a lot of people say League is a it's toxic, toxic community, yeah. but I mean it when I say like the amount of followers and people mm -hmm. that I have all come mostly from the League community. Mm -hmm. And if it weren't for them, I would not be here. So it's amazing and I really appreciate that. Yeah, that's that. incredible to hear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially that like friends influenced you and pushed you to actually put your stuff on there. Yeah, I was super reluctant to. I said, I'm not worth it. It's not worth the time, but they pushed me to do so. And because of that, like, I'm forever thankful. Even for the joke nickname that they gave me, Rini Dinger, caused me <laughs> to make my character and keep drawing the like, yeah. fan art. And that's where it all just blossomed. And I'm super grateful for that. And I always go back and I'm like, hey, guys, I miss you. Like, we don't get to yeah. talk as often. But I still go back and I thank them all the time for that. So, Well, thank you for having the courage to put your stuff on, on the forums because it led so many great things. Yeah. <laughs> and then... Um, what would you say your one of your worst moments would be uh, for for like your art and all that kind of stuff? Would it be that that rough patch you had like right after college, or was there another moment that like you almost quit art because of whatever reason? Or um, I'd have to say probably that. And again, where the toxicity of the community mm -hmm. comes through, there are a couple times where you get some really rough people. Yeah, it happens with YouTubers. It happens with anybody who gets any kind of e famous out there. You're gonna have people who are gonna be a little yeah, salty yeah. with you, and it's unfortunate, but it comes with it, and it's something that you kind of have to work through but mm -hmm. that's where again having a nice support of friends even just one or two that you can come to and talk and vent your frustrations mm -hmm. get your thoughts back together and then keep pushing forward has really helped and something I've learned to help me with the future of my work so yeah 
That's yeah, I can I can imagine because like usually in, in, even in like offline, if anyone uh, you could have a ton of people support you and say everything good, but that one person can really knock you down, and it takes a huge group of people to bring you back up. Yeah. It's kind of silly. I mean, you feel silly about it when you think mm-hmm. about it like that because you do have a lot of support, and then one person can say something that really cuts you deep. And it's crazy when that happens, yeah. but I mean, you really do have to take a step back and it's okay to vent your frustrations. It's all right because yeah, words do hurt sometimes, especially yeah. when you are worried or about yourself, you know, you have your self doubts, but you have your friends there and they're saying you're all good. But then that one person says the right mm. thing and it hits you just right. It's tough, but there are ways to work past it. Mm. And you know, I'm lucky that I have a support system there. Yeah. This kind of leads to the next uh, question. Sure. Um, what advice would you have for aspiring uh, artists um, or even streamers or whatever? Now, usually when I ask this question, the, a lot of times the response is like, don't give up and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But I was wondering if you could go a bit further and give another piece of advice. For example, Megaran had said, like, find someone you really respect and have them as a mentor. Even if you, if you, even yes. if you don't have to, like, you know, mm-hmm. follow them, you can still shadow them and all that. So what would be your piece of advice to... I would say outside of that, mm-hmm. not only just finding a mentor if they're willing to take you under their wing, networking. Mm. Go to these conventions, guys. Go to the conventions. Go say hi to the people that you mm. really trust. And don't just be super fangirly. It's okay to be fangirly. But go up, shake their hand, say, hi, I really like your work. Talk to them as a person. Make them a friend. Mm-hmm. Don't, like, force it upon them. Yeah. But just, you know, go up and talk to them normally. I'm more inclined to talk to people mm-hmm. that are going to be here and be like, hi, I really like your work. It's yeah. really awesome. You know, I really enjoy your streams. And I'll sit here and have a conversation with you. Mm-hmm. In that moment, I end up networking with you. We end up making a huge net. I have a whole network of artists, people. Yeah. Then um, other streamers, other um, YouTubers, other Tumblr people. Mm-hmm. I have so many people that I know, not just as people, but as friends. I have yeah. a massive network of them that if anything comes down to it, they help me when I've hit those rough patches. Mm-hmm. And they're the ones that have helped me move up to where I am today, like Ugu Bear. Mm-hmm. Ugu Bear is also another League of Legends um artist Mm -hmm. and she's very well known in the community and I was very shy at first but I was like okay I want to start trying to do conventions how do I do that and her and I became friends but she gave me so much information that helped me move up that I am now giving back to people as well Yeah, it's stuff like that networking is going to get you everywhere so going to the conventions shaking hands with random people with people that you really trust all of it will help you build up into what it is because it's not just fans it's not just people that you look up to everybody comes together and Mm -hmm. everybody helps one another and it's really fantastic fantastic and will definitely be the breaker for you yeah so do that go network nice and then uh so the last question is where can we find you online so that a lot of people probably are in love with you by now seeing all your artwork (laughs) and then your personality and how awesome it is um is there like a certain website that you have or social medias or anything like that? Yeah. Um, most of my stuff you can find me under Rin the Yordle. That's Twitter, Twitch. Um, but to make it easier, yeah. Rin the Yordle dot Weebly, W-E-E-B-L-Y.com links to all of my social media, Patreon, all that jazz. Okay. So you can find all me, my email. If you have any questions, streamers out there, please feel free to. I will try to help you if I can. I'm busy, but I will do my best <laughs> to help everyone as much as I possibly can, especially on Twitter. I respond a yeah. lot to people there. Awesome. Well, thank you again for this. Thank you very much. It was awesome.